everybody, and uh, welcome to this next edition of the Benjamin Franklin House Virtual Lecture Series. Uh, today, I am very happy to introduce Professor Harold Moss, and he will be speaking about True Grid, François Mac Louis Naville, and his Moral Tables. So, uh, without further ado, I will pass it over to Harold. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for uh, joining and uh, thanks for the Benjamin Franklin House for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk about a topic um, that I um, am uh, uh, currently uh, working on and uh, which is part of a larger uh, project and perhaps at the end I will tell something about the larger uh, context. I will certainly say something about uh, how I got to uh, this uh, person, this uh, uh, François-Marc-Louis Naville, uh, in a few uh, minutes. Uh, but I think for some of the participants uh, of this uh, webinar, I don't know, but some maybe um, uh, attended the, um, uh, the previous uh, webinar um, uh, given by um, Marcia Baliciano, who is the director of the uh, founding director of the uh, Benjamin Franklin House. Um, perhaps they visited uh, that um, uh, uh, webinar as well. And uh, uh, clearly, this is a follow-up on um, uh, Marcia's uh, talk, because I will get back to um, uh, Benjamin Franklin's uh, Art of Virtue. Uh, now, what I will do is uh, I will uh, start a PowerPoint, and I think you can already see. They can already see, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah thank you. Uh, 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 share my slides with you and then I will uh, walk you through um, uh, these uh, slides, um, explain um, uh, where I, um, where my Im interest uh, came from and um, what brought me to this uh, François-Marc Louis Naville and then what follows uh, from, um, uh, from my uh, study from this uh, uh, person, of this uh, person. And so uh, there we go, um, if all is well. Uh, what you see here is um, uh, in the background is uh, a page from a notebook uh, kept by um, um, a Genevan pastor uh, whose name is uh, François-Marc Louis Naville, uh, who kept for years in different um, uh, ways uh, the way that he spent his time. And of course, I will tell something about what you see, because I'm pretty sure that if you just look at all these small numbers, that it is not um, a straightforward what you're looking at. Uh, and part of my uh, talk is explaining uh, to you what you're looking at. But first, I want to tell you something about why I became interested in these moral tables. And uh, that uh, starts with uh, uh, today with um, a current uh, interest of policymakers in um, uh, studying our behavior and uh, thinking about how they can make our behavior more uh, efficient uh, and especially how they can make our behavior more efficient as we uh, would think our be uh, ourselves best fit. And so what I show here is uh, uh, some uh, headlines of uh, reports, some made in the Netherlands, some uh, uh, made elsewhere, uh, that are about just this issue. Policy making using behavioral expertise, sincere support, uh, the rise of the e-coach. As an example of an e-coach, I show you here um, uh, an app, which is uh, from uh, a Canadian uh, a company that perhaps uh, some people know, Carrot Rewards earn your favorite points, make healthy uh, lifestyle choices, and that uh, um, is taking, uh, uh, is trying to improve your health, wealth, and well-being. There are uh, other um, uh, programs like Happy Brain Science. Uh, there is uh, a lot of research on uh, the global impact of behavioral sciences on the public policy. So in a sense, my uh, interest uh, uh, comes from uh, behavioral economics, behavioral sciences that try to improve our behavior. And uh, this um, slide that I take from one of these reports that is uh, making a sort of survey of um, efforts in uh, behavioral cha change, um, it may be taken as, some, as something else. And I was sort of hesitating about the next image that uh, I will show you 
which is, um, um, uh, I think, uh, very apt for uh, the present uh, situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, uh, one of the issues that, uh, for example, is studied by uh, behavioral economists and behavioral uh, scientists more in general, is how uh, they can uh, make people more inclined to uh, participate in uh, vaccination programs. And um, as some people may know, perhaps there is a, a book uh, that um, uh, uh, is important in furthering um, this sort of um, uh, policies and this sort of research. And uh, perhaps some people know this uh, book. It's um, uh, Richard Taylor and uh, uh, law professor Kess uh, Sunstein, Nudge Improving Decisions About Health, Wealth and Happiness. Um, some people may even have uh, seen Richard uh, Taylor in, uh, um, uh, in uh, a, a documentary um, uh, on, um, um, uh, on the uh, 2008 uh, crisis. Uh, uh, some may know that uh, Cass Sunstein um, functioned as, um, uh, 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 as a, a, consulting, uh, a consultant to uh, Obama and that he was in charge of uh, 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 behavioral um, science uh, uh, initiatives to, uh, uh, for the Obama government to change and improve uh, behavior. So this is where my interest uh, uh, comes from. And um, <clears throat> I um, have been looking at uh, Richard uh, Thaler's um, uh, work, of course, how he motivates um, uh, this, this approach, this uh, nudging approach. And of course, this is all presented as something uh, which is uh, very new. And I show you here two um, uh, citations from uh, a, a paper, papers that he wrote in the 80s and the 90s, in which he um, um, is uh, one, uh, questioning how people are performing mental accounting operations. And then he is making a comparison with um, uh, uh, enterprises, uh, uh, big uh, big firms like General Motors, who uh, use uh, accounting systems, but unfortunately we don't have those accounting rules for individuals, and so we have to uh, find other ways of observing and inferring the rules. Um, and um, I was sort of uh, uh, puzzled by uh, those um, uh, uh, remarks or do those statements uh, of uh, Richard uh, Thaler. Uh, as if we uh, can only uh, infer rules of accounting of individuals and we don't have anything, uh, you might say, material that we can look at uh, on how people uh, use and used uh, accounting systems to improve their behavior. Um, and I put some of those um, uh, questions that I have for Richard uh, Thaler, I put them in uh, red. So, um, unfortunately, there is no equivalent. Uh, for conventional mental accounting, we can only observe and infer the rules and uh, organizations have explicit accounting rules, uh, but we uh, 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 as scientists, we um, uh, have only mental accounting systems that are used by individuals and households. Now households, for what I know, is not an individual and for what I know, households used um, uh, material tools for uh, their accounting as well. And so this is sort of a problem setting that I uh, come from. Um, people are uh, encouraged to improve their behavior. Um, um, this is uh, all uh, presented as something new. Um, and, and I, as an historian, um, I'm inclined to think, well, there is a history here. I have to look into that uh, history. And one of the things that I, as a historian, uh, li in particularly like, is uh, looking at what sort of material systems people used to improve their behavior. So rather than looking at a mental accounting system, I uh, want to look at um, paper um, uh, systems that people used to improve their behavior. And I would like to give you uh, another, um, another uh, pointer, uh, why uh, this uh, paper, uh, these paper systems, why they are of interest to me. And that goes back to um, a person that people uh, may have heard about, Max Weber, one of the founders of sociology, uh, who wrote um, in the beginning of the 20th century, and people may uh, know his uh, very famous work on the Protestant ethics, 
um, um, and uh, the two quotes that I give you here, they're not from uh, the Protestant ethics, but they bear on this um, uh, moral accounting and on material accounting systems. And so Weber is um, uh, responding here to economists who start theorizing um, a behavior of individuals. And then he says that, uh, well, uh, whatever the theory is, um, uh, they, uh, 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 these uh, theories, they act on the assumption that people are actually shaping their behavior in accordance with the principles of commercial bookkeeping. And commercial bookkeeping is for Max Weber a very important indication uh, of uh, rationality, as this first quote uh, says. And then he says, this is not something that is, say, in, uh, inherited, ingrained in the mind. It is something that has a history and that is peculiar for our capitalist way of um, uh, living. And so Max Weber was particularly interested in um, um, uh, accounting uh, principles, and he was uh, uh, looking at double entry bookkeeping, uh, for example. But one of the um, uh, people that he was looking at and that he took as a sort of uh, prime example of a person who fitted in his ideas of a person who was using principles of commercial bookkeeping to um, give shape, form to um, his own uh, behavior uh, was, of course, Benjamin Franklin. And uh, uh, Max Weber was not the only uh, a person to uh, take Benjamin Franklin as an important uh, a person for this. But uh, we have uh, Werner Sombart and uh, other uh, German uh, sociologists and uh, economists at the time who were trying to grasp what is happening, what is uh, specific for uh, this capitalist, this commercial way of living that is now, um, and I'm uh, now talking about the beginning of the 20th century, that is now overtaking uh, uh, the globe. And so my interest um, uh, 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 grew for um, uh, looking into systems of uh, uh, bookkeeping and how people used bookkeeping. And of course, there is a much la larger history here also internationally that I can uh, give you uh, uh, here. And I perhaps should uh, tell for some people who um, uh, um, uh, were in the Benjamin Franklin house two years ago, that I then talked about uh, a comparison between uh, different systems of bookkeeping uh, in China, in uh, Europe, and uh, uh, also Benjamin Franklin's uh, system. Uh, and I just show you here a couple of books that relate to um, uh, bookkeeping and to moral improvement of behavior. Confession and Bookkeeping, The Ledger of Merit and Demerit, and then some other books as well. But Franklin is uh, uh, central. And so uh, I think I should not repeat um, uh, uh, Marciana's, um, uh, Marcia's um, uh, talk on uh, Franklin's Art of Virtue, but just to give you an impression for those who do not know uh, Franklin's Art of Virtue. He explains uh, his Art of Virtue in his autobiography, partly written uh, uh, in the form of a letter to his son. Um, and then he talks, he explains this uh, Art of Virtue, uh, gives this um, um, a table, uh, uh, as well, in which he then, uh, uh, with, uh, with the help of which he explains how these tables and how this art of virtue helped him improve his health and his wealth. And uh, I just um, I give you this one example, and I suppose that uh, Marcia uh, talked about this example as well, but um, I think I need to uh, briefly talk about it uh, for um, what I will talk about in uh, what follows. And so, uh, what you see here is one page for temperance, which is, um, and perhaps I can, I think, yes, I can use a pointer. So temperance here, and what you see here is the list of um, uh, virtues that uh, Franklin was uh, working with. And I'm not going to explain them all, but you have temperance, you have silence, you have order, and then uh, there are um, a whole list of others. And I think that if you would go to the, uh, uh, to the, um, uh, to the uh, conference uh, given by uh, Marcia, she will have um, explained them all, and, but I will keep it uh, to those. And what you see uh, on the horizontal line is the days of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and so forth. 
and then you see that for temperance there are empty spaces and uh, these empty spaces are an indication that uh, Franklin uh, and that's how he explained it that he tried to concentrate on this uh, first um, uh, virtue uh, of this list of uh, uh, 13. So uh, he tried to be temperate for um, a week and then turned to the uh, uh, next um, uh, virtue, uh, silence, uh, tried to um, uh, obey to that um, uh, virtue as well, then to order and so forth. And what uh, these dots mean is that while he was concentrating on uh, temperance, he might make if you uh, 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 want to call it uh, mistakes. And so you see that on Sunday, he was not silent. He was not very orderly. There are two dots there and, um, uh, and there might have been others, but this is just uh, the example that he um, produced in his uh, autobiography. Uh, and um, the, the purpose of course, of the whole exercise was to end with a clean slate. Uh, with an empty slate. And so uh, that would be, uh, uh, you might say, a state of full virtue, if I, uh, I might call it that. And what uh, Franklin tried to explain is that by obeying to this uh, routine of um, concentrating on the virtues, that you were improving your behavior and that that improvement of behavior was of consequence for uh, your health, for the way that you uh, uh, found yourself in the world, and also for your uh, 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 health, uh, I mean, uh, first, and then also, of course, for your uh, wealth. Health, wealth, and well-being. The three things that you also find uh, on this uh, cover of the book, uh, Nudge of um, Thaler and uh, Sunstein. So this is, of course, in a very short um, uh, uh, span, um, uh, my uh, uh, petty uh, explanation of uh, Franklin's uh, Art of Virtue. Written um, uh, and practiced in the 18th uh, century and extremely popular in uh, the French speaking world. Franklin, Benjamin Franklin traveled a lot to uh, France, um, uh, but also in Geneva, he was uh, uh, kept in uh, high regard. And what you uh, see uh, in the uh, 90s and early uh, uh, 90s of the uh, uh, 18th century and then the beginning of the 19th century was that um, uh, intellectuals, um, um, uh, teachers, uh, uh, scientists, um, people of the elite in uh, Geneva, they uh, used not only uh, Benjamin Franklin's uh, writings, but also um, uh, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Bentham's to think about their own uh, behavior, the improvement of their behavior, but also the improvement of the uh, behavior of uh, the poor and the behavior of children. And um, uh, uh, th there was a sort of general, uh, you might say, um, a wish to, um, uh, to improve um, the, 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 the way that society was um, uh, functioning. And so one of these uh, uh, people was um, um, uh, François-Marc Louis Naville, uh, not the most uh, famous person, uh, uh, certainly not uh, today, but uh, neither in his days. Um, uh, he was a, a pastor in uh, Geneva. Um, he started in a small uh, uh, parish close to uh, Geneva itself, uh, worked there for um, uh, some 10 years, and then uh, turned into a pedagogical innovator. He uh, founded uh, a boys' school that uh, functioned on the principles of uh, another uh, Swiss um, a pedagogical innovator who is much more famous, and that is Pestalozzi. And for those people who don't know um, the name of Pestalozzi, um, someone like um, uh, Maria Montessori, much later in uh, the century and early uh, 20th century, she is much more famous, but you can see uh, Pestalozzi as a precursor of um, uh, um, uh, uh, Montessori. Uh, and uh, Pestalozzi had a, a sort of model school uh, in Yverdon-les-Bains, which is in the Francophone uh, part of uh, Switzerland as um, uh, Geneva. And perhaps I should also say that at the time, Geneva was not part of uh, 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 Switzerland. Uh, uh, Switzerland actually only became one country uh, in 1848. 
what you see is another person as well, Marc-Antoine uh, Julien. And Marc-Antoine uh, Julien was very important for the spread of um, uh, Benjamin Franklin's ideas. Uh, Marc-Antoine Julien developed uh, a sort of thermometer, uh, a moral barometer, as he also called it, or a biometer. And I will tell you something about this biometer, moral thermometer, in a minute. Uh, Julien was um, a French revolutionary. At a very young age, he, beca he became implicated in the um, uh, French Revolution and then uh, got uh, the task of um, developing, an, uh, developing an educational plan for the uh, French army. That was in the beginning of the 18 uh, or the 1790s, uh, I should say. Uh, uh, then he fell out of grace and um, uh, became uh, interested in uh, educational reform more in general and that's what he's uh, known for uh, nowadays and uh, also what his uh, uh, moral uh, thermometer is uh, known for as contributing to uh, um, uh, educational reform. So these people, they knew one another, they were in correspondence. Julien was very much interested in the work of Pestalozzi. He traveled from Paris to Yverdon uh, les Bains and uh, uh, in his travels, he passed via Geneva, was in contact with uh, the intellectual elite of uh, Geneva, and then also uh, uh, met uh, François-Marc Louis Naville, with, which he, uh, uh, with whom he talked about educational reform. I'm not going uh, to go into uh, the details of their educational uh, reform plans. Uh, for the purpose of this um, uh, uh, talk, I will concentrate on the um, uh, moral bar barometer that um, uh, Julien developed and that was then used by um, uh, Naville. But I think it's very important to, um, uh, to emphasize that uh, if you would look at Benjamin Franklin's uh, scheme of the day for order, that um, you see a very close um, uh, uh, a linkage between uh, this moral uh, thermometer and Franklin's uh, order of the day. Um, it's a sort of a reversed um, uh, a, a table that um, a Julien uh, developed out of uh, Franklin's um, order of the day. I'm not going to uh, show you exactly how uh, Julien did so. I um, uh, would like to concentrate on several aspects of this table and then would like to uh, show you a couple of uh, tables that were used by this Naville in bringing order and improving his uh, um, own moral and social life. And so um, uh, this table can be found, this table of Julien can, can be found in a small booklet, uh, uh, the thermometer of how to use your time. Um, uh, he published uh, this small booklet made various uh, other uh, versions of it as well, ended up with an essay of some uh, uh, 400 uh, pages. Um, so, uh, and, and this became uh, read and commented by uh, different uh, people. What you saw in the table were um, uh, uh, letters of the alphabet, and of course he explained what these letters of the alphabet, what they were. And to just um, uh, mention some, A stands for dates, then there is the temperature, the temperature of the day, not of the person, but of the day that should be uh, um, uh, noted. And then he goes through different parts of his uh, life. And so uh, there is the physical report. So sleep, eating, uh, physical exercise. There is a moral report. Praying is important. Relations with the family. There is an intellectual report. Uh, uh, which has to do with um, uh, um, uh, lectures, with obligatory uh, work, and so that may be um, uh, for a priest or a, um, a minister, that may be the work that uh, the minister has to do for the parish. Then there is social uh, work to be done, correspondence and so forth. And if you look at this, then this is much closer to uh, the um, uh, order of the day of Benjamin Franklin that perhaps some people know from uh, his auto uh, autobiography. <clears throat> and so um, uh, uh, now I would like to uh, go to uh, a couple of tables that uh, Naville um, was using for uh, his own decision making. 
and the, uh, his own improving his own uh, uh, life. But before doing so, so I never get there, but before, before doing so, uh, I would like to show you this uh, letter of uh, Benjamin uh, Franklin himself. And what you see here is um, what some people may know as his moral algebra. And uh, that's a very famous uh, tool in uh, decision making as well. And so what uh, uh, Franklin was doing, he was taking um, a page and then he was folding this page into two and then he was uh, uh, writing on the one hand side uh, uh, pros and then on the other side cons and that's what you uh, uh, see um, here uh, in making in getting to decisions in very important uh, matters and uh, Franklin wrote um, uh, about this method to amongst others uh, Joseph Priestley how uh, to make uh, decisions in very difficult uh, met matters now if you would uh, go to this uh, François-Marc-Louis uh, Naville, this is exactly what he uh, starts uh, doing at a very young age um, in Geneva. And so uh, what you see here is uh, what he was recommended to do by um, uh, an uncle of him who uh, traveled uh, to uh, New York, lived for a couple of uh, years in New York, then came back and who was a professor in the uh, Academy of Geneva in theology. And um, uh, uh, Naville is using uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin's um, moral algebra a bit differently than Benjamin Franklin, Franklin himself. But you see here is theology, you see here law, and you see here medicine. And uh, he is listing all reasons to start studying theology uh, reasons against the study of theology, reasons to study uh, uh, law, against studying law, and then uh, reasons for the study of medicine, medicine and against the study of medicine. And clearly for someone who is um, um, uh, um, thinking about um, uh, taking a direction in life, uh, the, the, the choice of a study is an important uh, choice. And so Naville was making up his mind. What should I do, uh, theology, law, or medicine? And uh, as you can almost gather from the reasons for, against, uh, uh, and for, against of these uh, three different um, uh, um, uh, 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 studies, uh, Naville choose for um, a theology. And a couple of important reasons for um, uh, Naville were that his father would have liked it and that this was the most general study that you could do. And so this was to the benefit of all of humanity that he um, uh, was doing this. So this is uh, Naville's early use of um, Benjamin Franklin's moral algebra. And I'm talking here about uh, 1798 or something. Um, that was not the only uh, thing that he used. He uh, used also uh, Franklin's Art of Virtue. <clears throat> and he was doing that in very different ways. And in using uh, Franklin's Art of Virtue, he um, uh, finally ended up using not uh, the uh, sort of tables that Franklin uh, developed, but uh, this uh, a different kind of table that was uh, developed by uh, Marc-Antoine uh, Julien. And I'll give you a couple of examples here. Uh, what you see here is um, uh, Naville's um, uh, uh, use of the table for self-control. Uh, Empire sur soi-même uh, is written here. So self-control. He is um, uh, um, uh, thinking about self-control along different uh, uh, categories. And then for these different categories, he is developing a notational system. And this notational system he is using for uh, the different days of the week to, um, uh, to note uh, if he or, uh, was yes or no um, uh, obeying to those different uh, categories for uh, self-control. So it's a bit different 
then uh, Franklin uh, was um, uh, lining out his uh, system in his auto, uh, autobiography. But um, uh, as Franklin um, wrote in the autobi uh, autobiography as well, it was of course um, just an example and he encouraged people also to uh, use uh, different notational systems if they uh, thought this fit. And this is clearly what Naville was um, uh, experimenting with. And so here is a different one. This is Naville uh, thinking about uh, activity and order, and then also um, uh, developing a sort of notational uh, system uh, in relation to uh, order in this case, and then um, uh, using this notational system for the different days of the week that now are listed vertically to uh, um, uh, 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 note if he or uh, yes or no <coughs> uh, was obeying to the different ways in which you could um, uh, obey to order. And uh, manquement, that is uh, deficit. So here he is not obeying in different uh, ways to uh, order. So this all looks uh, pretty complex. And I must say much more complex than uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the system developed by Benjamin Franklin himself. And I think that uh, even though uh, Naville was using this system that you see here for quite a, a, a few years for different virtues as um, um, distinguished by um, Franklin, he was clearly also uh, looking for a more um, comprehensive and a more efficient way of um, thinking about um, uh, summarizing and thinking about improving his moral uh, and um, uh, social and intellectual uh, life. Um, and so he was um, uh, uh, finally sort of uh, uh, settling, and I, I won't show you all sorts of intermediate uh, stages, but finally settling on this um, uh, uh, moral thermometer that was developed by um, uh, uh, Marc-Antoine uh, Julien. And as you can see in this uh, uh, table, uh, uh, here is this physical life that I briefly discussed, moral life, intellectual life, and social life. And here you see um, how uh, Naville was uh, using this table himself. And uh, perhaps I should say a couple of uh, things here on, for example, the days of the week, or the month, I'm sorry, the days of the month. Um, uh, you see here 15 days. Uh, the recommendation uh, of uh, Julien was to divide the month into two. That's what uh, Naville did. And so he was uh, uh, taking uh, notes on his uh, uh, time, uh, uh, the expenditure of his time to these, di to these different uh, categories for 15 days. And then what you see here is uh, he was adding up uh, uh, for um, uh, these different categories that he also uh, subdivided in different categories listed with um, uh, Greek letters. And uh, uh, some of these Greek letters, they um, uh, refer, for example, to study of English or study of um, uh, German that he uh, considered very important as well. Um, I would li uh, like to single out two uh, columns and those are these ones. Uh, and I see that I already used uh, quite uh, uh, quite a lot of time. Uh, but I'm getting somewhere, I can tell you that. And so there are a couple of, um, uh, uh, only a couple of slides um, uh, following, let me uh, promise you. And those uh, slides, they, um, um, uh, they get you very, very quickly uh, back to um, uh, uh, the present. Uh, so what you see here is, um, and perhaps you can even read that, 24, 24, 24, 24, 24, 24. Those are, of course, the hours in a day. And there are only so many hours in a day. And what you see here is um, uh, one hour, one hour and a half, um, a three quarter of an hour, that's the waste. And so uh, 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 in French, um, it's called the résidu de vie, the uh, uh, life residual, and um, uh, one of the purposes of filling in the table was to diminish 
this um, residual of, of life as, uh, um, as much as possible. So not to waste your time. And that was for um, a, a, a pastor really very important because um, time is the one thing that is given to you by your maker and you should not waste it. And so um, uh, there is a close relation here, you might say, to a utilitarian efficiency idea of using your time and um, a religious idea that uh, time should be spent frugally. Now, what you see here is a sort of uh, a summary in, uh, uh, in, in one uh, a word uh, of uh, the day or in one sign. And that is better seen in um, uh, this um, uh, diagram. And so um, uh, 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 there was a recommendation uh, that Julien was uh, very uh, favorable about, and that was made by um, a very famous, much more famous than uh, Naville himself, um, uh, um, uh, co-citizen of um, uh, Naville in uh, 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 Geneva, Marc-Auguste Pictet, to make a, a, a table, a, a graph, uh, of your um, or of how you uh, considered your uh, the uh, your um, the, the spending of your day overall uh, in terms of this was a good day uh, this was a bad day in terms of and I'm going to use this uh, this word deliberately in terms of pleasures and pain was this a painful day or was this a pleasurable uh, day. And uh, uh, thinking about it in terms of pleasures and pain brings you very, very close to uh, the ideas of the utilitarian philosopher, um, a contemporary of uh, Naville and uh, Julien, uh, Jeremy Bentham. And so there was a, a close linkage, um, uh, one can say, between the ideas of um, 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 Benjamin Franklin as they were perceived in uh, Geneva and in the Francophone world and uh, the ideas of uh, Jeremy Bentham. But this was uh, certainly for someone like Naville in a uh, religious uh, spirit, not to waste your time. Now, very, very quickly, uh, quickly I will uh, give you a couple of um, citations that bring us back to um, uh, Max Weber and to the present. Uh, Julien, who wrote uh, about this um, uh, uh, a moral thermometer, he compared um, uh, his moral thermometer with uh, the books of um, uh, commercial accounting. Our booklets have, and I, uh, I have difficulty in reading this because there is uh, this sharing screen in front of it, but they uh, are uh, closely uh, comparable with the ledgers of traders and bankers and with the comparative bulletins of the main trading places which show at a glance the rise or fall of government bonds or commodities in each country. Um, I talked about this moral uh, thermometer. Um, I leave that, but I think it's also interesting to uh, see that at the same time, a merchant, so this is a bit later, um, uh, Berger wrote this, uh, um, the, 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 that he dreamt of a society in which it would be compul compulsory to keep a personal di a diary uh, in the manner of uh, Julien uh, in the uh, 1840s. But uh, this fits into the idea that you need to uh, keep track of your life um, uh, by means of, um, uh, of books to be able to uh, uh, be a good and frugal uh, person. A man without an almanac is a ship without a compass. And this uh, uh, citation actually comes from a book, which uh, of course uh, studies in detail uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin's own almanacs, which were so popular in the um, uh, 18th century. Now I will finish with just two slides. And the one is about external, um, um, uh, you might say external life and the other is about internal life. And with external life, I'm thinking about the factory system that was about to uh, develop in the beginning of the 19th century. I, t I told you that Naville was um, uh, a pedagogical innovator. Naville was very important for the development of educational uh, schemes. Simply a table of how are we going to um, um, uh, divide the, the time of pupils during the day. 
Now, if you think about dividing the time of pupils during the day, you can also think about dividing the time not just of pupils, but also of factory workers during the day. And that's exactly what was happening in the same time. And mostly the reference is to um, uh, Jeremy Bentham, but uh, Benjamin Franklin's uh, Art of Virtue was, uh, I would uh, maintain, as important. And um, I, I would like to refer to, uh, here to um, uh, uh, Robert Owen's um, uh, uh, Social Utopian uh, Factory in uh, Lanark. And uh, Robert Owen is known as someone who was uh, also uh, putting uh, systems in place to uh, supervise, to survey the behavior of his factory uh, workers. The moral economy of the factory system. Now, that is, you might say, external life, uh, outside production. Here uh, is, uh, are three images that go from the 18th century to the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see, I think, a wonderful uh, porcelain um, uh, 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 that shows a housekeeper who is uh, keeping her uh, books. Um, in the middle, you see um, a housekeeper, um, end of the uh, 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, who is advised to, um, uh, to, uh, uh, to keep a desk or a table uh, for herself to make a reservation to reserve an office of her own to be able to, um, uh, to keep the books of the, uh, of the family. On the right hand side, you see uh, what that will um, uh, deliver for a family. How I made uh, $1,150 in 11 a month. And so a frugal person, a person who is uh, keeping track not only of her expenses, but also of her time management, she uh, uh, is a good housekeeper. She is a rational person. She is the person that will bring her family to uh, wealth, uh, who is able to uh, uh, make that her family will live in health, wealth, and well-being. And so uh, a contemporary recent um, uh, 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 initiatives uh, uh, to nudge people um, to improve their uh, life by uh, keeping track of their um, uh, life as a lot of um, uh, apps that people uh, use nowadays um, uh, uh, those kind of initiatives, they uh, indeed have a very long history. And at, the, uh, at present, I'm uh, in the process of um, recovering uh, that history with a couple of um, uh, students uh, in Geneva. And um, my last uh, slide would be uh, to my colleagues uh, in, uh, at the center, uh, Varas Pareto, who helped me in doing so, and in particular to Gabriel Soudan, uh, uh, who um, uh, provided some of these uh, wonderful um, uh, images. Um, a last remark, uh, if you have any reference to notebooks, private account books that you know of, um, here's my email and yes, send them to me. And that's the end of my uh, presentation. Great, thank Sorry. you so much, Haro. Uh, that was very interesting. Um, and we actually already have a couple of questions. I was just gonna say, we now have uh, we are opening the floor to questions. So we have two already, which is great. Um, so please do send them through if you have any uh, questions. But the first one is, um, creativity often comes from idle thoughts during unstructured moments. This is one of the reasons educators believe that children should not be overscheduled. How do you think Benjamin Franklin, an extremely creative man throughout his lifetime, would view Naville's imperative not to waste time? Oh boy, that's a very nice question. Um... Now, um, I I think I should um, uh, one of the ways. So I'm 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 not dodging the question, but I'm uh, I, I would like to refer uh, here not to uh, Benjamin Franklin, but to uh, um, Marc Antoine uh, Julien, who uh, said the, uh, about his um, uh, moral thermometer that people should not um, uh, uh, strive to uh, uh, excessively to minimize um, uh, the, um, the, the time wasted. And um, he did not give a reason for this, but actually you give a very 
good reason for this. And I must confess, I don't know about uh, Benjamin Franklin's uh, thoughts on this. Um, but you may uh, uh, perhaps even inform, uh, or you may inform me on this, uh, what Benjamin Franklin uh, himself thought about this. Actually, I think that Benjamin uh, Franklin, as uh, Naville, would have incorporated moments uh, of uh, idle reflection within uh, um, his uh, working day. And so that he would uh, have, uh, say, spare moments, but then would have made reservation for these uh, spare moments so that there was a, a sort of uh, strict time reserved for uh, these idle moments and so that it was not that you were um, uh, 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 spending or, or uh, spending time on, for example, reading a book and then become distracted and not uh, 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 reading uh, the book appropriately. And I think it is in that way that uh, Naville was uh, thinking about uh, uh, wasting your time if you uh, are spending your time on a, a particular subject, then you should ha have your full concentration on it. And I think that's actually in the spirit of Benjamin Franklin. But um, <laughs> perhaps you disagree, or perhaps the, uh, uh, the person who asked this question uh, thinks otherwise. Well, um, I'm, yeah, I'm sure they will, they will get in touch if uh, they yes, want to. Yes, yes. Uh, but so we have another question. Uh, and essentially, it, it boils down to how well do you think Nabi would fit into French life today? Ah, um, well, first, it's important to stress that Naville is not a Frenchman. Naville is a Swiss, or is a Genevan, uh, not even a Swiss. He is a, a, a citizen of uh, the Republic of Geneva. And uh, Geneva, for a very, very long time, was a separate republic. And so, in a sense, my answer is, how well does he fit into Calvinism? Because Geneva, as uh, you may know, uh, was the city of Calvin. Uh, uh, Calvin. And um, uh, Naville was uh, um, a minister in the, uh, in the church of uh, Geneva, which was the Calvinist uh, church as it was practiced in Geneva. And so there are a couple of elements that um, uh, I uh, could refer to. Uh, uh, like um, uh, something like uh, uh, festivities is not something that he thinks uh, high of. That's something that people absolutely should um, uh, keep to the minimum. So it's all very, very serious that uh, uh, people should do. So in that sense, he certainly does not fit in uh, a contemporary uh, and perhaps uh, uh, neither um, uh, uh, set, certainly not uh, a French uh, court life. Um, uh, of the 18th century. Um, uh, yeah, so perhaps I should leave my, uh, my answer there. Yeah. Well, this isn't a question, but I think it rounds off kind of bringing this into kind of back into Franklin a little bit. But um, Patricia Schaffenberg has said that Franklin's grandson, Benjamin Franklin Beige, studied in Geneva while Franklin was ambassador to France. I don't know if you came across that at all in any of your Franklin research. Um. It, it does ring a bell. I, I, I don't remember this, but it does ring a bell um, uh, uh, also because um, uh, Benjamin Franklin's autobiography was first published in French. Um, and so it doesn't uh, strike me as uh, strange that um, it's the grandson, right? That the grandson uh, of Benjamin Franklin studied in Geneva. Uh, he was very, so uh, Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, he was really very popular in uh, Geneva in, in those days. Yeah, but um, I, I, I should have to look, uh, uh, I have to look into this, yes. Okay. Well, uh, that's about all the time that we have today. Thank you very much, Harrow, for taking the time to do this presentation. Um, your, as, as you said, your email's on the screen there if anybody would like to get in touch. Um, but uh, yes, thank you very much for tuning in to this uh, Benjamin Franklin House uh, virtual lecture. Uh, we are recording this session, so it will be available on our website, uh, www.benjaminfranklinhouse.org. Uh, and please go to the website to look at all our future lectures coming up. So um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the occasion. Mm -hmm. Bye, everybody.